Okay, so first of all, when we talk about monoclonal antibody, yeah, when you use the word monoclonal, mono means one cloner, means that this antibody will target, whenever they produce the whole batch of them, will target one specific antigens only. So this kind of the antibody, okay, we're going to use them for the medical diagnosis, disease treatment, and even in the research. We prefer to use this monoclonal antibody because they give us the specificity. Very important, they give us a specificity. So they only have for one antigenic determinant only. Okay, so because we want to use it for diagnosis, disease treatment and research means that we want to produce a large scale of this monoclonal antibody, or in short, we say the MEB, monoclonal antibodies. Are you clear? So in this case, in this case, okay, how we can produce a large scale. When a large scale means that we want the cells to okay, continue to multiply. When they multiply from one cell to two cells, two to four, four to eight, and continue, we have a large number of the cells that produce the antibody for us. So look like B cell is very good because we know that if this is the B cells, the matured B cells, if we give them cytokine to activate it, they are going to proliferate to many, many cells. Some of them will specialize, become the plasma cells. Some of them become memory B cell. So we do know that if we choose B cells, B cell can multiply. You can have a clonal expansion. They can carry out the clonal expansion. But the problem here is B cells itself cannot produce antibody. They only can divide and divide and divide because they are not so specialized yet. So they cannot produce antibody. So never mind, we give cytokine, give us plasma cell. But when you give us a plasma cell, problem. Why? Because these plasma cells, they secrete antibody. Okay, plasma cell secrete antibody. But too bad, they do not divide. And they are short-living cells. Are you clear? They are short-living cells. So therefore, we do have the problem. We want to have the mass production, large-scale production is impossible. But this breakthrough came in in 1970s when we use a cell fusion technique. So when you mean cell fusion, basically means that we have the cell A, cell number one, cell number two. So by using a suitable chemical, we can fuse cell one and cell two together. Okay, so the cell that produce is termed as hybridoma. Okay, can I see that? Cell number one, cell number two. So in terms of antibody production, we are going to use plasma cells. Why use plasma cells? Because they can produce antibody. For us, but they are short living cells, right? They are short living. So now we take the cell number two. Cell number two, we take cancer cell, which is myeloma cell. Myeloma cells, they can continue to multiply. So it means the hybridoma little will have the ability to produce antibody as well as they have the ability, I mean, the characteristics of cancer cells continue to divide. Give us many, many hybridoma and we can use them for the productions of antibody. Okay, so a small number of plasma cells producing a particular antibody will fuse with a cancer cell. So this cancer cell is called myeloma cells, okay? myeloma cells and eh, myeloids. Okay, so myeloids and myeloma cells. And the cell produced by this fusion is known as hybridoma. And the hybridoma cells divide by mitosis and secrete antibody. So let us look at how we produce hybridoma. Okay. Okay, so now let us look at how we can produce hybrid duma. So in order to produce hybrid duma, so first thing, first thing we need to have plasma cells. So from where we get plasma cells? So first we get the lab memo. So this, this lab memo, can be rat, can be the mice, can be the monkey, it can be horse, it can be rabbits. So it depends on the 
the, the productions, okay? Lab memo. So what we're going to do to this lab memo, we are going to inject the non-self antigen. Or we call it protein of interest. Let's say, okay, we want to, just now we said that we can use the monoclonal antibody to, we can use antibody to neutralize the toxin, kind of, right? We can use the antibody to neutralize the toxin. But what is the problem? What is the main problem here is, if we want to use a monoclonal antibody to, uh, sorry, you want to use the antibody to neutralize the toxin, you need to produce it in the large, okay? You cannot, base, you cannot wait for our own body to actually, uh, okay? Uh, how do I say that? Uh, you cannot wait our own uh, body to produce sufficient antibody. The time taken, I mean, by the time you have the antibody, you die already. Can I see that? Are you clear? So now mind, we inject this non-self antigen, let's say, for example, the venom of the snake. Okay, you are bitten by the snake. You have this antitoxin, okay? So what happened here is this lab mammal definitely will develop the immune response. Are you clear? They develop immune response. So when they develop immune response, means that they are going to produce the plasma cell. Because the plasma cell is going to secrete. Okay, so the first cell, I can get it already. Okay, plasma cell. So these plasma cells can help us to secrete antibody. So where we can get these plasma cells? This plasma cell, you can obtain it from the spleen of the lab mammal that you inject. Okay, so we get a plasma cells. Second, we prepare a second type of the cells called cancer cells. So this cancer cell is myeloma cell. It's a type of cancer cell. So we let these two cells actually fuse together now. So in order to let them fuse together, we can use a chemical called fusagent. Okay, we use the chemical called fusagent. It's a chemical that fuses two cells together, or we can use, I mean, uh, this fusagent, one or the fusagent is ethylene glycol, a polyethylene gly glycol, PEG. Polyethylene glycol is a chemical that we can fuse both cells together to form hybridoma. Okay, once you fuse it, it forms this what we call the hybridoma. Clear so far? Okay, yeah? so very simple. We have let memo. Now, let memo because we inject the, the non self antigens, they have the immune response to target this non self antigen. So we get the plasma. So this plasma cells, we get it from the spleen. We, I mean, we have to slaughter the animal. Like basically, we have to slaughter them. And then, in an ethical way, we get the spleen out. Then we isolate the plasma cells. Then we use a few surgeons, fuse it with the myeloma cells. So we form hybridoma. Okay, in the process of forming this hybridoma, we may have the first issues. What is the first issues here? So not all cells are fused. Means that in the system, to try to imagine, in the system, after we apply the fusion, we will have a mixture. Mixture of what? Mixture of number one, you have the plasma cell, unfused plasma cell. We have unfused myeloma cell and successfully form hybridoma. So in order to identify them, we need to do a screening. Now, why we need to do a screening? Because I do not want to spend my nutrient. I do not want to spend my uh, money to grow the plasma cell or to grow the myeloma cells. These two, I don't want to grow them. I don't want to grow them. Only hybridoma cells I want. Are you clear? So this one, I don't want. Okay? Plasma cell, myeloma cells, I don't want. Okay, so how we do it? So first thing, we need to do the screening. First screening. So first screening, we are going to use what we call the HAT medium. Okay. Let's look at the first issues. 
HAT medium. So now, when we choose the cells, we choose the cell. Okay, so the, uh, the, the, the principle is very simple. Number one, according to this mixture, we have plasma cell. Plasma cells, they can metabolize HAT medium. So therefore, they survive if we grow them in the HAT medium. Okay? Number two, myeloma cell. Myeloma cell, we purposely kick out the gene so that they cannot metabolize. We knock out the gene so that they cannot metabolize HAT. So if we grow these myeloma cells in the HAT medium, they will die. Okay? Now, number three, hybridoma cell. Because hybridoma cell form because the fusion of plasma cell and myeloma cell. So means that they have the ability to metabolize HAT. So means that my myeloma cells again will survive in the HAT media. So in this case, first, we kick out the myeloma cell because it died. Okay, so no more myeloma cell in the HAT medium. How about plasma cells? Plasma cells don't worry because they are short living cells. They have a short living cells. So just let them be for a few days. After that, they will die already. So it means that only hybridoma remain. So only hybridoma survive and remain in the mixture. Now, are you clear? So this is a first screening. First screening, basically, we remove those plasma cells and myeloma cells by using this HAT medium. But, a big but here. Why? Because even though these hybridoma cells already, we select confirmed hybridoma cells already, we have the problem whether these hybridoma cells produce the antibody, their monoclonal antibody or not, whether they produce the antibody that's suitable for us to use or not. So therefore, we need to do the second screening. So these hybridoma cells, once we select already, these hybridoma cells, we're going for the second screening. So the, in the first screening, what's the purpose? First screening, let me write down. So first screening, We want to get the hybridoma. Get rid of other cells. We want hybridoma only. We don't want the plasma cells. We don't want the myeloma cell. So that's why that is the way the, the, the purpose of carry out first screening. So second screening is more detailed. Second screening, we want to actually to get to obtain the hybridoma cells that produce specific desired antibody. Are you clear? Desired antibody. So in this case, we use ELISA method. Now, don't worry about this ELISA. We are going to talk about this ELISA in A2. Just understand that this ELISA method allow us to do the screening. Okay, you know, in order to perform this ELISA, first thing, step one, we're going to dilute the hybridoma suspension. So means that now, guys, in this container, okay? So we know that inside got hybridoma. But guys, when we inject, when we inject this, okay, the non-self antigen, this lab may not also expose to certain other pathogen, maybe. 
Try not. They may develop some other kinds of the. May some other kinds of the, uh, plasma cells. So means that uh, you may have the hybridoma different. You may have the red one. You may have the green one. You may have the purple. You may have the orange. Okay, few orange, purple. Okay, green, red. So it's a mixture. So as long as they are mixture like this, it's no longer called. In this case, they cannot produce monoclonal antibody. Understand? When they are mixture like this, they cannot produce monoclonal antibody. Definitely they cannot. So what we're going to do, we dilute them first. How dilute? Dilute until when I use the my well or paddy dish, something like this, they contain only one hybridoma. They contain only one hybridoma. So this hybridoma can be a red color, one only. Okay. No blue, orange. Okay. Purple. They only contain one cell. Okay. So what will happen if I culture them? If I culture them, because from one cell, they, are, they diffuse with the cancer cells, right? When they diffuse with the cancer cells, when it fills with the cancer cells, what happened actually now you can see that they carry out mitosis because cancer cells, they have ability to divide. So from one cell, you get many, many cells. But because they, they initiate from one type of cells only, so all of them now are the same hybridoma now. Can you see that? They carry out mitosis, all of them will have the same, okay, clone. Clonal expansion take place. Can you see that they have the same? So what we're going to do, we're going to take out this. Okay, the suspensions. And what we do, the, the solutions then, we test the types of, of antibody. Whether it's a correct antibody or not. Okay, we want it to be a correct antibody. So using which method? Using what we call the ELISA. Okay? Enzyme link immunosorbent assay. Actually, it's a, a long, it's a short name, a eh? short form of abbreviations for enzyme link immunosorbent assay. Okay, ELISA method. So the detailed ELISA methods, we're going to learn it. Uh, I will put it, I will learn, uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you guys detail in your A2 when talk about the gene tag. Okay, so let's say the first one is the correct one. Second one wrong, third one wrong, the fourth one also wrong. So means that these three of them, we discard. We don't continue. Okay, and this one because it's correct one. So the correct one now. Now what we're going to do is we have the mass culture that. Since we know they are correct, right? So what we do? We're going to have the massive or mass culture. So when the mass culture, we change it to a big flask. And because they come from the same kind of monoclonal, I say, same kinds of the hybridoma, so they can produce for us the monoclonal antibody. Okay, can be produced. Are you guys clear so far? Okay, so hybridoma technology, okay, is a method to produce large number identical antibodies. So they are known as monoclonal antibody. So to start this, okay, to start this process, we need to actually inject the laboratory memo with the, okay, with this what we call the, uh, Antigen, so non self antigen. So, for example, the venom. But again, uh, guys, the venom may be uh, the okay. How we do this? We don't inject venom because if the venoms can kill us, okay, the snake venom, it can kill the lab member also. So, most of the time, we get the harmful, a uh, harmless one. For example, this venom, okay, this venom may be the shape like this, okay, quaternary protein. And we know that this one can kill us, so we actually remove this part. 
Okay, we remove this part. And then the remaining not so, I mean, uh, what do you call this? Uh, what is it? Uh, won't cause the problem once. Okay, we inject it into the black memo. Okay, yeah. Uh? So after we inject, we leave it for several weeks. Okay, so that's the immune response. I mean, uh, start. So splenocytes are isolated. Splenocyte means the spleen. And from the spleen, we take out, okay, the splenocyte. So this splenocyte actually will have the plasma cells. So with that, this plasma cell fused with immortalized. Immortalized basically means they wouldn't die because of cancer cells forming hybridoma cells. So the fusion of the plasma cell with the myeloma cell can be done using electrofusion, with electricity, okay? But alternatively, we can use a fusion, for example, polyethylene glyco, polyethylene glyco, okay? So the myeloma cells we are select beforehand. Now we have to make sure that they are not secreting antibody by themselves. If not, they're going to mess up everything. And the lack of this HGPRT gene. Now, this one is for information only. Don't worry about this, okay? No needs, okay? For information only, okay? Making them sensitive to HAT medium. So it means that they cannot metabolize. Just need to write that back. Cannot metabolize HAT medium. So it means that they cannot survive. They are sensitive to Okay, so they cannot survive. Okay, so what we do now with the few cells, means the hybridoma cell incubated in HD medium for 10 to 14 days. So because of this amino uh, uh, patterns, block the pathway that allow for nucleotide synthesis. So therefore, unfused myeloma cell will die because they cannot metabolize HAT medium, they will die as they cannot produce nucleotides. Again, okay, they won't continue to do that. Removal of unfused myeloma cells is necessary because, because their cancerous cells will outgrow the other cells. So it means that you won't be able, I mean, you spend the money on do the wrong thing. Eh? Put it this way. Oh, yeah. So unfused plasma cells, they will die also because they have a short lifespan. Initially, they survive, but after that, they will die. Okay. So in this way, the only plasma myeloma hybrid or we call hybridoma can survive because the gene, the HGPRT gene come from plasma cell is still functional. So they continue to produce the antibody which is the property of plasma cells and they are immortal in this case. And they are immortal, okay? Because in property of the cancer cell. Okay, now next. So we, the incubated medium is then diluted into the multi-valve plate. So means that we dilute such as ways that each cell, each well only contain one cell. So since the antibody in the well are produced by the same plasma cells, so therefore they will be directed toward the same epitope, so but marking at the same site only. So the next stage is the rapid primary screening process, which identifies and selects only those hybridoma that produce antibody that of appropriate specificity. So the first screening technique used is called ELISA, okay? So the hybridoma culture supernated the solution just now, right? And then we have a secondary enzyme label conjugate. Don't worry about this, okay? Because we're going to learn this one in A2, okay? And the formation of the color product initiate a positive hybridoma. So it means that if ELISA gives a color change, if there is a positive color change, we know that, oh, they produce, okay? Correct, antibody, yeah? the hybridoma. So the hybridoma that produce the desired antibody can be clones to produce many identical daughter clones, and then we can supply them the medium, the, okay, the culture medium, so that they continue to survive. Okay, so initially we grow them in the multi valve plates, very small, but after that we change the tissue culture flask, basically larger place for them to uh, grow, and then we should maintain their well-being so that provide them sufficient cells to cryopreservation, means that we can store them, for the future use, or we can use a supernatant for the subsequent investigation. So the culture supernatants can give us one to 60 micrograms per ml of the monoclonal antibody. Okay, huh? so with this, I've done for the monoclonal antibody. So the next part we're going to talk about, okay, since we produce a monoclonal antibody, how we use them, okay?